Welcome to European Journeys. This is the sixth stage of a series that takes us to Sweden, where we look in particular at how Sweden was Christianized a bit more than a thousand years ago. For this stage, we are returning to the region of Skåne, that's the southernmost province of Sweden. And we were there a couple of stages ago, where we visited a small village near the city of Lund, where in fact Lund will be the city we are going to visit today. It is the most ancient city of Skåne, and most probably the most ancient city of Sweden altogether. So it's a place that is very worthwhile visiting. Now, it is also worthwhile visiting because, uh, in fact, it is there that the first diocese of Sweden, so Roman Catholic diocese, Christian diocese, was founded in the 11th century. And it is, in fact, for this reason that we are visiting Rund today. Now, the place, the most obvious place that one would want to visit for exploring the origins of a diocese would be the cathedral. But that's not the place we are going to visit today. In fact, we are going to go 300 meters away from the cathedral into a pedestrian road. And in that pedestrian road, we find uh, shops and uh, other sorts of commerces and also a restaurant, in particular, an Italian restaurant in a white house and uh, a white building. And on the side of that building, we find the painting, which is a black silhouette or three black silhouettes one of them is carrying a cross, and the two behind uh, that man, there is a man and a woman there who have their hands joined together in prayer. And under the silhouettes, we find the words Drottens Churko Ruins. Drottens Churko Ruins, that is the ruins of Drottens Church. And Drottens probably comes from the word Drott, which means king or queen. Well, the ruins are not visible really in the, in the street. Uh, to find them, you need to enter into the building where the restaurant is located. Next door, next to the door of the entrance of the restaurant, we find another door that leads you into an underground museum. And that's where the ruins of the church are located. Now, these ruins actually were discovered fairly recently, only in the 1980s, in fact, when the houses in the street were built, the streets was being remade, and uh, that's when the, the ruins were discovered. And uh, thankfully, they have been preserved, and uh, now they are part of, a, of an underground museum there that is possible to visit even for free. So, what do these ruins tell us about the early Christianization of Sweden, in particular of the region of Skåne? Well, in fact, uh, these ruins are probably the most ancient ruins of a church in Lund. And uh, so uh, they point directly to the foundation of the diocese I was talking about. But to understand what really happened in Skåne at the time, we need to return to the political situation about which I had already talked about in previous stages. And in particular, that famous battle we talked about, the battle between those three kings, the king of Sweden and the king of Denmark on one side and the king of Norway on the other. Uh, that battle was a naval battle, the Battle of Svolder, which happened uh, off the coast of Skåne, closer to Germany, in fact, most probably near the island of Rugen today. And uh, the battle had led to the death of the king of Norway, Olaf Tryggvason. Now, Tryggvason is a very important king to understand uh, the development of Scandinavia because he was, in fact, one of the most Christian kings uh, of his time. Um, in fact, he had gone to Britain. We had already explored that in a previous stage. He had gone to Britain, was baptized there. He didn't go to Britain with very peaceful intentions initially, but he returned with uh, some missionaries who would then begin to Christianize the land in which he was king, that was Norway. But Norway, at the time, included also some parts of Sweden, such as Västergötland or uh, even Skåne. So, the king of Norway, Olaf Tryggvason, reigned only five years in Norway. Even though the time was very short, he had a huge impact in the lands where he was reigning and even beyond. But he dies there at the battle, at the hands of this alliance between the king of Denmark 
and the king of Sweden. We had already uh, talked about the king of Sweden, Olof Sjötkonung, in our last stage. But here now we need to talk about the king of Denmark, Svein Folkbeard in English. Um, and this king was pagan initially, but he also converted to Christianity. And in fact, when they defeated the king of Norway, both the king of Denmark and the king of Sweden agreed to share the lands between each other, that is the lands that used to be under the rule of the king of Norway were now shared between the king of Sweden and the king of Denmark. So you had Vaster Gotland, which we explored in our last stage, went under the king of Sweden and Skåne became part of Denmark. So from the year 1000, when the battle occurred, Skåne went under the rule of the king of Denmark. But it's a very important uh, period of history because, in fact, this is the time also when Sven Folkbid, who turned to Christianity in the meantime, began to send missionaries to Skåne. And one of them is a man uh, from England, who was originating from, from England, and uh, his name was Gotebart. Gotebart. So he came from England, he was sent from by Svenks for Beard to go and continue the Christianizations of the new land, the Christianization of the new lands that uh, were now under the rule of uh, the King of Denmark. So he went, he is said to have gone in parts of uh, Norway a lot, but finally he became, he was appointed the Bishop of Lund, the first Bishop of the Roman, Di Roman Catholic Diocese of Lund. And as I said, this is a very important fact of history because it is the very first time that a diocese is created in Sweden, in uh, the Nordic nations, in fact. Uh, before that, all the work, the Christian work that was happening in Scandinavia, in the Nordic nations, uh, was somehow supervised by the the archbishop of hamburg bremen it was in hamburg and uh, uh, all the coordination of the work somehow uh, was uh, done from there but now we have a diocese that is planted right in sweden in the land that is today sweden it was denmark at the time in lund a roman catholic diocese is planted there and so we clearly see the transition that scandinavia is going through and sweden in particular even though the land was Denmark then, where from a land of mission, we are not transitioning into a land that is Christianized, where the Christian worldview is taking root. Now, let's return to this Drottenskirka, this uh, church, the, the ruins of this church. Uh, it's very likely that, in fact, there was the seat of the first Roman Catholic diocese. And why do we know that? Why do we believe that? is because there is a baptistery there the, that was found. Now, baptisteries, in fact, uh, were only in the churches where you had um, rulers of the church or people in the higher authority, such as bishops. Bishops were allowed to uh, give baptism. And so, therefore, uh, Drotten's Churka, the Drotten's Church, might probably be uh, the first place where the uh, Roman Catholic diocese in Lund and in Sweden, for that matter, uh, was created. And in fact, Drottenskirka, as a final note, uh, did not always have that name. It's named, so Drott probably ne means king or queen, and that may be related to that uh, Sven Folkbeard who sent uh, uh, the missionaries there in Skåne. But at the time, uh, the church was in fact named the Church of the Holy Trinity. So. A very important place to understand, to spot very much uh, uh, how uh, the Christianization of Sweden uh, developed. Lund is certainly an important place to remember. I'm Cedric Placentino. See you next week for another stage of European Journeys.